Hello and welcome to another Rutana Vlog. My name is Devin Brent. I'm the Senior Principal Architect for Rutana. Today's subject is on the Cisco UCS integration for the Rutana Virtual Wisdom Platform. The purpose of the Vlog is to demonstrate how with the Virtual Wisdom Platform that we can use our new Cisco UCS integration to find bottlenecks within the UCS chassis and the UCS fabric interconnects. What we will use today in this video is just the new Cisco UCS integration. No other integrations are required. In order to demonstrate this, we will use the Virtual Wisdom Portal in the reporting section. So why would one want to use the Cisco UCS integration on the Virtual Wisdom platform? Well, traditionally, the UCS chassis has been viewed kind of as a black box. And why? Because it has proven difficult to quickly identify throughput issues inside the chassis itself. Yes, it is possible to use UCS Manager to look at the statistics of the individual components inside the UCS chassis. However, you've got to drill into each one of those components one at a time and look at them individually. The Vertana Virtual Wisdom Reporting section can provide a holistic view of taking a look at all the different components all at the same time, time aligned in a logical flow. This can go ahead and help you understand and identify the bottlenecks that we're within the UCS infrastructure from top to bottom. So you will be able to see from the fiber channel and ethernet adapters through the server, through the IO module, through the fabric and interconnect, up to the fiber channel infrastructure. And depending on what other integrations you have on your virtual wisdom platform, you'll be able to glean additional details and connect the dots all the way together to be able to tell what's going on in your entire infrastructure. In this section of the demonstration, we're going to go ahead and split this into two separate topics. Topic number one, we will talk about what the UCS integration gives in comparison to what you probably already have on your virtual wisdom portal. And topic number two is we're going to go over the different bottlenecks within the UCS chassis. So for those of you who already have probably ProBSW installed, the visibility that you'll have to this infrastructure will be, like in this example, a Cisco MDS 9700 and its ports, and then the Cisco Fabric Interconnect 6454 with its fabric, with this fabric ports connected via fiber channel. This is where your visibility ends. With the UCS integration, you will now have information on the fabric interconnect for the fiber channel ethernet ports that uplink to the IO modules on the UCS chassis, as well as has information on the FI ethernet ports that for example in this, we have connected to a Cisco Nexus 7000 switch. On the UCS chassis side, we'll have visibility looking at the IO module backplane ports, as well as taking a look at the UCS blade servers themselves. Typically in a UCS blade server, we have what's called an MLOM adapter. The MLOM adapter allows you to create multiple virtual adapters to connect out through the fabric and connect to the outside world. In this example, we've got two fiber channel adapters and four ethernet adapters. This is a pretty typical config from the customers that I've looked at. Moving on to topic number two, bottlenecks. So as you can see and derived by the name, in this UCS Blade server, there is an MLOM 40G-3 adapter. For this adapter, there is a total of 40 gig of bandwidth but keep in mind that it is shared. You do have the ability to data rate limit each one of these adapters. So let's say eight gig. However, if there is still 
bandwidth available on the MLM adapter at the point in time it hits the data rate limit, it can go beyond what it is set to. This, of course, is different than what a typical fiber channel admin is going to be used to with fiber channel ports connected to the infrastructure, typically 8, 16, or 32 gig, for example. So what that ends up causing a problem with is you can't necessarily look at 800 megabytes a second, there's going to be an 8 gig, et cetera, right? Because you can potentially have more bandwidth coming out than what you might expect even with the data rate limit. Next on the IO modules, the backplane ports, depending on how the MLOMs are configured in the blades, is going to give you how much bandwidth that you got going up to the backplane. In this example, with a UCS 2408 IO module with current configuration, we have 10 gig of bandwidth that come between the server and the IO module. Next, for the IO module itself, for the uplinks to the fabric interconnect, this IO module has 25 gig per port connecting up to the fabric interconnect. Finally, on the fabric interconnect, now for our ingress egress to the outside world, we have 8 gig for our fiber channel connecting to our MDS 9700s, and to our Nexus 7000, we've got 10 gig of bandwidth coming from the Ethernet ports. So what we have here is we got 40 gig total bandwidth on the server, potentially. The backplane ports in this example is limited to 10 gig. The IO module has 25 gig per port that is connected. Fiber channel is 8 gig and Ethernet is 10 gig going out to the outside world. So depending on the amount of traffic going ingress and egress out of this environment, we have the potential of having multiple bottlenecks. Having the UCS integration installed, this will help you to quickly and easily see anywhere along the path of if you have a bottleneck within the infrastructure. And now let's go ahead and demonstrate what we just went over in the reports on the Virtual Wisdom platform. So what you can see here is we can go ahead and select any UCS chassis to go ahead and filter by, and we've already done so, picking our internal services chassis. Starting from the top, what we look at is looking at the uplinks from the fiber channel environment connected to the FI itself. So here's each one of the ports off the FI and what its traffic is carrying ingress and egress out of the fabric interconnect. Continuing on, now we take a look at the uplink to the Ethernet environment exclusively. So this is going to be all of the Ethernet traffic that is coming ingress and egress out of the FI to your Ethernet network. Continuing on, now we take a look at the Ethernet traffic uplink from the fabric interconnect to the USCS chassis via the I.O. modules. Now we can go ahead and see all the traffic that's going in and out of the chassis itself. Keep in mind what we're looking at now is going to be all Ethernet traffic because this is FCOE traffic. Fiber channel and Ethernet are combined under FCOE in this view. Now we taking a look down here, we are now looking at Ethernet IO from the backplane to the servers, both ingress and egress off of each one of the blade servers. And now we finally get down to each one of the individual blade servers themselves. Now, when we take a look at here, now we're gonna have the breakout of both ethernet and fiber channel traffic individually, unlike what was seen up above, which was FCOE traffic, which was both of the ethernet and fiber channel combined. So here we can see for this blade, blade number three, here's the traffic for ethernet in and out. And then we've got all the fiber channel traffic in and out of each blade, all separated out. Finally, as we go ahead and reach the bottom here, 
we take a look at now all of the virtual interface, each one of them named, provided that you have them named in UCS Manager. Taking a look at exactly which one of the adapters for Ethernet, ingress and egress, is carrying traffic. And then finally, fiber channel traffic, ingress and egress, so you know exactly where each one of the workloads are coming from. Finally, to wrap up the report, we've got three different views to go ahead and show you aggregated traffic. So maybe you can go ahead and start to spot some of the bottlenecks as well. Here we go and take a look at the chassis, ingress and egress, total traffic, the IO module, ingress and egress traffic, and then the fabric interconnect, ingress and egress traffic. One good thing to take a look for is like in the case of the IO module, if you know an IO module has a capacity of 100 gigabits per second, you will go ahead and see it peaking out and flatlining um, at a particular time. To summarize, what we have looked at today was looking at the new Cisco UCS integration on the Virtual Wisdom platform and helping you to see the data flow through the Cisco Fabric interconnects, the IO module, and then every blade within a UCS chassis. This will help you identify which piece of the infrastructure is generating all the IO and where potential bottlenecks are within your infrastructure. Please take note, this is not the only thing that the UCS integration helps you with. You can also go ahead and take a look at errors within the chassis, as well as being able to take a look at flow control from Priority Flow Control, for example. Thank you for taking the time today to watch our little presentation on the UCS integration for the Virtual Wisdom platform. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us we can get your questions answered.